Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss the different ways you could manipulate an equilibrium constant based on changes that you make to the reaction. So for example, um, if we want to calculate the equilibrium constant for a reaction, we will be running an experiment on, but we look in the literature and it's not there. Um, there are ways to look up other literature equilibrium constants and, and make these sorts of changes to get it to the desired overall reaction and therefore we can calculate that reaction's equilibrium constant. Let me just dive into it and then hopefully it'll make more sense by seeing um, examples and derivations. So let's say we modify the chemical reaction um, and we reverse it for example. Then if that happens, we would need to invert the equilibrium constant. Now, I'm terrible, terrible about memorizing rules, so I wanted to do a derivation for you to help you remember. Let's say we have reaction one is A plus two B. Remember when we're in equilibrium, you need to use the double headed arrows to produce three C. Now in the previous video, you calculated the equilibrium constant as what over what? Excellent, products over reactants. And so I'm gonna say the equilibrium constant for reaction one is equal to the concentration of C to the third power over the concentration of A times the concentration of B to the second power. Okay, products of a reactants, don't forget those stoichiometric coefficients are the exponents in the equilibrium constant expression. All right, well, let's reverse that. If we reverse the reaction, then C becomes a reactant, and then A and B are the products. So if I asked you to derive the equilibrium constant expression for the second reaction, which is the reverse, it would be what over what? the concentration of A times the concentration of B to the second power over the concentration of C to the third. And as you can see, the equilibrium constant for the second reaction is just the inverse of the equilibrium constant for the first reaction. And so this satisfies this rule that if we were to reverse the reaction, we need to invert the equilibrium constant. So to summarize, if we reverse, then we need to invert it. Now please do not get confused between the rules that we're going over now and the rules you would have learned in first semester general chemistry for Hess's law. And in fact, I encourage you to look back at your notes from Hess's law or go back in that particular part of the textbook um, when you study thermochemistry in first semester general chemistry um, and look at those rules. Um, so for example, for Hess's law, you're, you're talking about enthalpy here. So if you reverse the reaction, you just change the sign. Now, like I said, make sure you write down these rules and you understand them. Even use this derivation to kind of study this to make sure that you don't get confused. Um, pretty often I'll see students fall back to Hess's law and they may not even be mindful that they're doing that like it's just out of habit it's something that they you know studied in first semester general chemistry and it just stuck with them so please please be mindful and like I said it even helps to write this down and say nope these are not the rules I'm following I'm following different rules for the equilibrium constant and you even know how to derive them as well if needed right so in case you do blank out or get confused and like, oh, which rule is it? <laughs> so let's continue on. What happens if we multiply the coefficients 
in the reaction by a factor, we raise it to the same factor, right? Whereas with the Hess's law with enthalpy, you would have just multiplied the enthalpy. Um, and my apologies, my handwriting. I should have said, there we go. All right, so let's do our example here. If we have a plus two B to give us three C, then we just said that the equilibrium constant would be the concentration of C to the third power over the concentration of A times the concentration of B to the second power. Let's multiply the equation by two. So now it looks like 2a plus 4b gives us 6c. And keq2 is equal to the concentration of c to the sixth power over the concentration of a to the second power over the concentration of b to the fourth power. Right, just based on products of a reactants. And if we compare the two expressions, we can see that the equilibrium constant for the second reaction is essentially this one raised to the second power, right? So let's go ahead and write that down. So it's basically KEQ one to the second power. To make this more generic, because you may not always be multiplying by two, let's say We multiply the equation by n. So by any exponent, n. and n can be actually a fraction. So maybe to the one half, for example, or one third. So to the n. Therefore, you can say that the equilibrium constant for the second reaction can be equal to the equilibrium constant for the first to the n power. And there you go. All right. The last rule is that if we add two or more individual equations to obtain an overall equation, we multiply the corresponding equilibrium constants by each other to obtain the overall equilibrium constant. So whereas with the Hess's law and enthalpy, you would have added them all up together, right? But with equilibrium constants, we multiply. And let's do that derivation together. So let's say we have A goes to 2B. Then you would say, all right, the equilibrium constant, products over reactants, that's B to the second over the concentration of A. And let's say we have 2B goes to 3C then the equilibrium constant for this reaction would be the concentration of C to the third power over the concentration of B to the second. And if we were to add these up together, we see that 2B cancels out here. So our overall reactions, A goes to 3C, right? So this is overall. And KEQ for the overall would be the concentration of C to the third over the concentration A. 
Now, if we look at the first two equilibrium constant expressions and see how they're related to the overall, then we can say that the overall equilibrium constant is equal to the previous equilibrium constants multiplied by each other. And if we took their expressions that we have derived above and multiply them together, then we would see that these cancel out and that we do indeed end up with the equilibrium constant expression that we derived here from the reaction itself, okay? So when you add individual reactions, then you need to multiply their equilibrium constants in order to obtain the equilibrium constant for the overall equation. All right, so let's just quickly review. If you reverse, then invert the equilibrium constant. If you multiply the coefficients, then raise the equilibrium constant to that power. If you have two or more individual equations, then multiply their equilibrium constants to obtain the overall equilibrium constant. So I suggest that you condense all these like information into something shorter um, and a little bit more visual maybe to help you remember these rules clearly um, so that you can utilize them when you're approaching different problems. So let's work an example problem together. The reaction below has an equilibrium constant of 2.26 times 10 to the fourth. Remember from the previous video, Kp just means that the units were measured in pressure, um, but still an equilibrium constant. Um, the temperature is 298 Kelvin. Temperature will always be provided um, because equilibrium constant is affected by temperature but typically we don't use it when we're doing our calculations. Calculate the Kp, and then this was a multi-part problem, but we're only working the first part. So calculate the Kp for this reaction and predict whether the reactants and products or products will be favored at equilibrium. So what you wanna do here is you wanna look at this equation here. This is like your first reaction and it's equilibrium constant. And you wanna see how it's changed here because I wanna figure out what's the equilibrium constant of this new equation here. I can't find it. I'm gonna to have to use literature to help me out. And so I can see that the reaction is in the right direction, right? I don't need to reverse it. The appropriate reactant is on the left side of the arrow for both reactions. And the products are on the right side of the arrow. Nothing's changed there. Then the next thing I look at are the coefficients. And I see in order to go from here to here, if I just look at one of the, just the reactant itself, I would need to divide by two. This one here, right? I would need to divide by two. But remember, there was no rule for dividing. It was always like if you multiplied. And so a way to multiply this is not to, you know, divide by two, but rather say multiply by what? One half. So the reaction here is multiply by one half, which is effectively divided by two, right? So it's multiplied by one half, which means we take the Kp for the original equation and raise it to what power? excellent to the one half. So in order to find the equilibrium constant for this reaction, we need to take the original equilibrium constant and raise it to the one half. So that will be 2.26 times 10 to the fourth to the one half power, which is 150. Now the question, and a lot of times these questions follow up, like, you know, is, What's useful about equilibrium um, constants? Well, they tell us if products are favored or if reactants are favored. So based on what we just calculated, what will it be?
Excellent. Products are favored. Remember from the previous video that a KEQ greater than one means that the products are favored. If you ever forget, just remember that the equilibrium constant is products over reactants. So to have a KEQ of 150 means that the number here is much larger than the number down below. Okay. All right. Thank you guys for watching and see you next time.